the United States Air Force is preparing to change the acquisition strategy for its next generation of fighter jets. The new paradigm would require the industry to design, develop and produce a new fighter in five years or less. Welcome to Millennium 7 Star, the channel that helps you make sense of military history and military technology. This is a particular video because we discuss a new design and acquisition concept that the United States Air Force has made public for the first time in an interview to Defense News in September uh, by Will Roper, who is the Air Force Acquisition Executive. The new generation Air Dominance Program will adopt a rapid approach to developing small batches of fighters with multiple companies, much like the Century Series of aircraft built in the 1950s. This Century Series approach would be a radical change from the Air Force's former thinking on its future fighter. In its Air Superiority 2030, a study released in 2016, the Air Force described a long-range, uh, stealthy, obviously, sensor shooter called Penetrating Counter-Air. This would act as the NGAD Architecture Central node, networked with other sensors, drones and any other platforms. The Air Force would use prototyping to speed along key technologies in the hope of maturing them early enough for inclusion in the aircraft, which was expected to be fielded in the early 2030. Now they seem to have changed their mind. The Digital Century series, as it is called, would flip that paradigm. Instead of maturing technologies over time to create a gorilla fighter, the Air Force's goal would be to quickly build the best fighter that the industry can design in a couple of years, integrating whatever relevant new technology already exists. The service would select the proposal, put a small number of aircrafts under contract, and then restart another round of competition among the manufacturers. The manufacturers in turn would revise their fighter designs and would explore new leaps in technology. The result would be a networked, and this idea is not abandoned, family of fighters, obviously some more interrelated than others, developed to meet specific requirements and including best of breed technologies aboard a single airframe. So, one jet might be optimized around a revolutionary capability, like for example an airborne radar. Another fighter might prioritize state-of-the-art sensors and include artificial intelligence for target recognition. One might just be a weapon struck with no human pilot. Rather than waiting 20 or 25 years for a multi-role platform incorporating all the most advanced technologies, there would be a series of different platforms with different specializations. This will be achieved by radically changing the project management methodology, introducing three specific improvements. The first is agile development, a practice borrowed by the software industry in which a piece of equipment is introduced with minimal functionalities and then improved by progressive iterations. The second is the open architecture, which would become a standard for the defense community aimed at achieving the equivalent of plug-and-play in modern computers. The final is digital engineering, that is, physical modeling, not only of the plane, but also of the production methodologies, the production lines, the logistics, and the operation on the flight line. In this way, the design can be made by a company and the production easily outsourced to multiple producers, actually an approach that closely resembles the Russian way, to be honest. How this can be commented? Well, this is obviously a reaction to what has happened with the F-35. The development has been very long because of the extremely high innovation content and there has been too much emphasis on the systems and too little on the platform, leading to the plethora of well-known problems that had to be painfully fixed along the way. The approach used so far, pretty much everywhere in the world, has brought to a situation that is often regarded as unavoidable. But it is not ideal at all. 
fighters are obviously much much more capable than they used to be in the 50s or the 60s and they are also sophisticated multi-role platforms in theory in theory good at everything but extremely complex and expensive to operate the flip side of this is that production numbers plummeted, leaving all the air forces with just a handful of machines to execute their missions. 20 years ago, the 100 planes air force seemed to be the absolute minimum, but today many important air forces have even fewer planes than that. Also, because modern fighters are sophisticated systems, a long training is required to operate them and a relatively high percentage is always grounded for servicing. Finally, in this situation, the loss of an F-35 to an enemy opposition would be a hundred times as bad as the loss of a P-51 during the last war conflict. So finally, the major air force in the world seems to have come to its senses, admitting that the risks need to be spread among much more simpler platforms, producing large numbers and focusing onto the right balance between the platform and the sensors. The resulting variety is going to be logistically complex, but it is also operationally good because it maintains the opponent in the incertitude of what it is facing. And it is also more resilient because a specific countermeasure may be effective against one platform but not against the others. I invite you to consider that if in a few years someone finds a hack or a countermeasure that makes the F-35 vulnerable, 75% of the Western Air Force's capabilities are lost in one go. Putting some of the focus back on the platform is also positive because an air superiority fighter must have different specification from a dog fighter, which in turn has different specification from a strike attack, which is different from a close air support, which is different from reconnaissance and so on. Modern fighters are a very good compromise and do most of the things acceptably well, but they are, again, few, complex and expensive. Finally, the larger numbers and ease of production are a better assurance in the case of long hostilities against near pairs, where hundreds of platforms can be lost every week, while the current production capacity of the Western world is in the hundreds every year. I know very well that there are going to be terrible political pressure not to go in this direction. But I still believe that this is a much more effective approach for an effective defense and it should be pursued. Well, we'll see. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.